Hello dear friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel Mukesh English, this is Mukesh Soni. In this video, I have brought you a very famous speech by Kailash Satyarthi while receiving the Nobel Prize Award in 2014. Kailash Satyarthi from Madhya Pradesh was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 2014 for his struggle against the separation of children and young people and for the rights of children to education. He has brought children's right to education to the spotlight through, the, through his work with UNESCO. He shared the Nobel Peace Prize 2014 with Malala of Pakistan. He is best known for, here I mean to say, Kailash Satyarthi is an Indian social reformer. He is the founder of Bachpan Bachao Andolan. He continues to work for children's rights and the betterment of the downtrodden for many years. So this is a brief introduction about Kela Satyarthi. Now, <clears throat> now let's know about the theme of the uh, theme of the speech. What is the theme of the speech? Child labor, slavery, trafficking, child marriage, sexual abuse, illiteracy. They're all some of the social issues which Kailash Satyarthi highlighted in this speech. His, his aspiration and resolution is to liberate humanity from all man-made crises. He requests, in his speech, he requests, he says, let's walk together in the pursuit of global progress. Not a single person should be left out or left behind any corner of the world from east to west from south to north. So this is how we would like to get a, we will get this picture, a very different portrayal, which he has brought out in his speech while receiving Nobel Peace Prize in the year 2014. <clears throat> so Kela Satyarthi begins his speech by addressing all the dignitaries, viewers, and all the other guests in the audience. So the first point, he brings out here Kela Satyarthi. Kela Satyarthi as a representative of millions of children. So Kela Satyarthi opens his speech by calling himself as a representative of the sound of silence. He's a, he's representing the he's representing the face of invisibility, the cry of innocence. He has become there. He has come there as a representative of millions of children who are left behind and the empty chair empty chair was a reminder for the millions of children who have lost their dreams and hopes in this world second point we find here the voice of dreams kela satyarthi considered himself to be the voice of the dreams of those who lost their childhood and hopes he then goes on to recollect an instance from his memory. He says that 20 years ago, at the foothills of the Himalayas, he happened to meet, he met a small skinny child labor. And this small boy asked him a question that haunted Kailash Satyarthi for many years. And he would like to post this question to the audience. So what was the question the small kid asked him? Is the world so poor that it cannot give me a toy and a book instead of forcing me to take a gun or, or a tool? Look at this question, what this small boy has asked him. I, I would like to repeat here. Is the small world so poor that it cannot give me a toy or a book instead of forcing me to take a gun or tool? He continues his speech with the anecdotes from his expressions, his experience with the children across the world. And he again, he says that 12 years ago, a child mother from the streets of Colombia asked him, what did she ask? I had never had a dream. Can my child, sorry, I had never had a dream. Can my child have one? She said, I have never had a dream. Can my child have one? Through these two anecdotes, Kela Satyarthi is opening up a larger picture of the child labor and the human trafficking. He is standing there with the lost, with the lost dreams of millions of children 
who were forced into labor and other illegal activities during their childhood. So this is how he is the voice of many dreams of millions of children. Secondly, further we find him, he gives some references of some holy books. So soon in the speech, Satyarthi goes on to quote from the Holy Bible. So he quotes from Holy Bible, quote, Let the children come to me. Do not hinder them from the kingdom, for the kingdom of God belongs to them, unquote. According to Jesus, as mentioned in the Bible, children are the most pure and blessed souls on the planet. By quoting the words of Jesus, Satyarthi is trying to remind the audience the value and the virtues of kids. Then afterwards, he quotes some important quotation from the Holy Quran to quote, kill not your children because of poverty. Quote, kill not your children because of your poverty. The Holy Quran is asking not to punish the children for poverty or for any other reason caused by us. The Holy Book is reminding us to protect and to take care of such children. The, the, so this is how these two holy books teaches us to look after the millions of children, those who have millions of dreams. Now the next point we find here, Satyarthi would like to refuse to accept something. What is this? For Kela Satyarthi, there is no greater violence than to deny the dreams of children. If you are denying the dreams of children, dreams of children, you are doing some the greatest violence. He says, he refuses to accept that all the temples and the mosque and the prayer houses have no place for the dreams of children. He says that he refuses. He refuses to accept that he does not. He refuses to accept that. All the temples, mosques and the prayer houses have no place for the dreams of the children. According to him, if we can build a mosque, temple, church or any other house for prayer, we need to give equal importance to the dreams of the children. Children's future must also hold an equal importance in the world like the large prayer homes. Secondly, he refused to accept that. The world is so poor to feed the children because he understands that one week of global military expenditure can bring all the children in the classroom. One week, how much you invest on the military, if you invest the same thing on the children's education, you won't find any dropouts. All the children could be seen in the classroom. So the money spent on the military expenses across the world in a week can help to gather children to gain the education. Thirdly, he refused to accept that no law, no constitution, no police, no judges could protect our children. So these laws and the offices are built to ensure child's safety. And if they are not able to function properly, the whole idea of having an institution becomes meaningless. Kailash Satyarthi also refused to accept that the shackles of slavery can never be stronger than the quest for freedom. He strongly believed and refused to accept the fact that the change in the unbreakable tangles of slavery is stronger than the need for freedom. He is advocating for freedom and to break off from the chains of slavery to set the children free. So this is what he refuses to accept. Now further, what's his aim of life? Afterwards, Kela Satyarthi keep on explaining. He explains his aim in life. He says that his aim in life is to ensure that every children born in this world grows, eats, sleeps, develops and sees daylight. His aspiration is to ensure that every child loves, cries, dreams, learns and goes to school. The most important is here, they must go to school. 
so he aims for a world in which every child can have a dream he carries on to say he continues to say he was privileged to work with many courageous people who have the same aim they are never they are have never they are never willing to stop or never return back even if that means that they have to sacrifice their own life so they are not scared of the threats or the attacks because they believe strongly in the aim and they believe that the change is required so finally he says that we have never given up we have never given up against any threat or attack and we never will now the biggest challenge or the biggest crisis according to satyarthi the biggest challenge or the biggest crisis is that that is knocking to us so what is the biggest challenge biggest crisis today is the fear and intolerance fear and intolerance will help the injustice and violence against children grow and not help bring in change it won't help to bring the change then uh, then he calls malala uh, malala, malala uh, kayantas or uh, shazia his as his own daughters and he says that malala kayanta shazia they are all victims of violence because they all stood for the right for a child to have a dream and education he goes on to point out that all these brave people have chosen peace over violence tolerance over ex- tolerance over extremism courage over fear so this is how they were able to overcome such kind of challenge or such kind of crisis so we find an optimism note a ray of hope satyarthi is not disappointed completely he sees a kind of a hope a ray of hope he believes that the solutions will not be found in conference rooms or as prescriptions from a distance from the actual issue only when one gets into the matter and understands the complexities of the issue we can easily find out the appropriate solution so we need to enter we need to enter we need to understand all such complex issues then obviously solution will also be there now the next one he is going to narrate a story and which can bring a great role in the to bring a change in the world so satyarthi then moves to he further he talks about a story to explain how even one tiny contribution can change the world he says one heavy fire breaks out in the forest and every animal including the lion the king of the forest everybody decides to run away lion then spots a small bird trying to extinguish the fire with a little drop of water on its beak what is the lion so the lion he sees that one small bird is bringing drop by drop drop by drop water to extinguish the forest fire lion laughs at the world and mocks her for her stupidity but the but the bird was very adamant and she stood her ground by stating that she wanted to do her bit so the what does the author say the author says here the speaker says here the lion laughed and said wow can you do it keeping just one drop of water in your beak so that means to say our small attempt our small attempt can bring a great change that's what mr satyarthi would like to say here if everyone puts their efforts if everyone joins their hands obviously we can bring a great change now the ninth one i mean to say the further he says that we are living through the we are living through the age of rapid globalization immediately he reminds us he reminds all the listeners that remember dear friends we are living through an age of rapid globalization with the help of high speed internet today we have 
good services, flights. So we are all connected from all the corners of the world. So a lot of changes are possible. But there's a lack of compassion. What's lacking is here? There's a lack of compassion. He believes that only compassion for each other can change the world. Global compassion is the only way forward. Finally, he quotes the words of Mahatma Gandhi, quote, If we are to teach real peace in this world, we shall have to begin with children, unquote. So I, I, would, like to, I would like to repeat here. He quotes Mahatma Gandhi's words, If we are to teach real peace in this world, we shall have to begin with children. So this is what he says here. We are in the age of rapid globalization and we need to have the compassion and we need this global and what kind of compassion? The global compassion we must have. Now, he asked a lot of questions to the audience. He posted, he has posted series of questions in his speech to the audience. Number one, first question, whose children are they? who stitch football boots that have never played with one. Number two, whose children are they who harvest cocoa yet have never tasted chocolate? Whose children are they who are dying of Ebola? For fifth one, fourth one, whose children are they who are kidnapped and held hostage? So all these are the rhetorical questions they have. Only and only one answer. They are our children. What's the answer of those four questions? They are our children. The children who goes through inequality, child labor, human trafficking and diseases are all the children of the world who have to contribute to make this world a better one. Now, there was a one question which eight year gold uh, eight year girl asked one question. So here's Mr. Satyarthi remembers another question which was asked by an eight year old girl who was rescued from forced labor at some stone quarry. Quarry means to say mines. So she was rescued. She asked one question: Why did you not come earlier? Why didn't you why didn't you not come earlier? Right? Why did you not come earlier? That was a question. Her anger shook him and gave him a sense of urgency. So this anger brought a light in the minds of Satyarthi. Every single minute matters. Every single child matters. Every single childhood matters. This is what he tried to recall and this question brought such kind of great thought process change a change in thought process now further Kela Satyarthi goes on to challenge the passive and the lazy attitude shown towards the issues of the children further he challenged the silence shown by the society and the leaders and the neutral steps that they have taken towards rescuing and offering these children a better future. He wanted everyone to be ambitious and keep their promises. Now there's a narrative about a cobbler boy. 50 years ago, on his first day at school, Mr. Satyarthi saw a cobbler boy sitting outside the school. He asked his teachers why that boy was working outside the school. Who asked? Satyarthi asked to the teacher, why this boy school working outside the school and why is he not attending the classes? The teacher had no answer. Then Satyarthi gathered the courage, asked the boy, gathered the courage to ask the boy's father to find out the reason. The boy's father replied, Sir, I had never thought about it because we are born to work. This answer made Satyarthi extremely angry. From that day onwards, he made his vision. He wanted that the cobbler boy to sit with him in the same classroom. 
He then goes on to urge the audience to re to remember to offer a right to life, the right to education, the right to freedom, the right to safety, the right to dignity, and the right to equality, and the right to peace. So what did he do? He told the audience to remember what? To offer a right to life, right to education, right to freedom, right to safety, right to dignity and the right to in or sorry right to equality and the right to peace so that was a change this cobbler boy brought in satyarthi now we are moving to the conclusion of the speech satyarthi later conclude his concludes his speech by mentioning that he is saying more smiling and happy happy faces and the hope in the eyes of the children today he wants everyone to feel to feel and see this joy he sees thousands of mahatma gandhis martin luther kings nelson mandelas calling on us his aim his aim is to his aim what's his aim his aim is now to democratize knowledge and universalized universalized the justice he wants knowledge to be given to everyone irrespective of their caste creed color race or age he wants to universalize justice and give everyone an, an equal chance and opportunity he wants all to show and experience global compassion love and kindness for each other so let's march satyarthi is calling everyone to march so that we have we, so that we move from exploitation to education poverty to shared prosperity slavery to liberation and from violence to peace so finally mr satyarthi concludes his speech with a sanskrit slogan it's in english let us march from ignorance to awakening let us march from darkness to light to light let's march from ignorance to awakening let's march from darkness to light let's march from mortality to divinity the crust of his speech being a first an experience of the ground reality and the need for collection action from each and every country must do it so hence we can say that kela satyarthi speech while accepting the nobel peace prize in the year 2014 it brings out many images many portraits of the child trafficking which he encountered in his life satyarthi who is the advocate for india's child rights he claimed that the only motive in his life to make sure that every child is a free child remember he has only and only one motive that every child is a free child so dear friends this is how i have tried to analyze satyarthi's nobel peace prize acceptance speech in the year 2014 if you have liked this video don't forget to click on the like button please do mention in the comment box if you have not yet subscribed my channel please please do subscribe the many interesting videos are in the queue apart from the literature apart from a textbook so many other videos about pronunciation um, group discussion and the other and the other videos related to the jobs are about to appear very soon thank you so much for watching